the empath grenades. This video provides you with information which is a very rare instance where it is permissible for you to use a form of attack as against the narcissist. Before I explain what the empath grenades are, there is a substantial caveat which you must have regard to. It is important to emphasize that you should obey the first golden rule of freedom and ensure that once you know, you go. You should implement get out, stay out and ensure that you have a solid no contact regime. These empath grenades are only to be used in the event of ambush when the narcissist appears unexpectedly in a place where you could not have anticipated our appearance or on departure as I explain further in this video. The aim even then should be to ignore us but if you are backed into a corner they will prove of use to force the narcissist into retreat by adopting an alternative option from the three assertions of control. If you are not familiar with what those three assertions of control are, then you ought to go to the Knowledge Vault and obtain that material as it is central to understanding narcissism. There are occasions when you have been on the receiving end of one of our conversational narc grenades which has been thrown at you as we then walk away from the ensuing carnage, sucking up the fuel and marvelling at our own brilliance. There will, of course, have been times when you wished that you had something that you could lob at us in order to make some kind of impact, a comment or a gesture which does not take much effort but manages to land a blow on us. The problem is, until such time as you receive the benefit of my mentoring, I should imagine that your responses to your particular narcissist have been along these lines, shouting and hurling insults at us as you lose your temper, crying as you call as many names as you can think of, possibly throwing something at us with a yell of frustration, banging the door shut in annoyance, telling us what you think about us as you bristle with anger. Of course, as avid students of my work, you will know that all of these responses and more besides only impact us in terms of the provision of fuel and, whilst they may challenge, will cause us to then be readily able to drive further direct assertion of control at you. You can call me as many insults as you can think of, but if you do it as you scream at the top of your voice in anger or with tears spilling down your cheeks, your savage words, your facial expression, the look in your eyes, your gestures and your body language merely fuel the narcissist. Now, for the purpose of extracting more fuel and providing me with something to go and complain about to other people, thus asserting control over you and gaining more fuel and smearing you into the bargain, I will provoke you even further. Once you have lost yourself to emotion, we will keep pushing, prodding and provoking in order to make you deliver even more fuel to us. We will feign that we are hurt. We will pretend to be angry in response when we even mimic being frightened of you. It's all a fabrication generated by the narcissism and it's just designed to draw more fuel and to control you. Accordingly, you should not respond in such a fashion. Instead, when deploying these empath grenades, you must do so as near as you can to showing no emotion. If you provide any significant emotion, the effect will fail. If you do these with the bare minimum or even managing to do so without any emotion, you don't provide any fuel and therefore we will be wounded. Be aware that when wounded our fury will be ignited. This may mean that we withdraw. We may unleash a cold fury. Uh, through that withdrawal or there might follow a heated fury of insults and violence and therefore you must proceed with caution. You are best performing these empath grenades when you are departing so that as you are leaving your own empathic grenade is thrown to explode and wound us and you are well away. They are not for general use understand that. And if you think that they are, you're just going to get yourself into unnecessary difficulties driven by your emotional thinking. You need to consider carefully the type of narcissist that you are with 
and based upon my material the likely response to challenge or wounding. Now with the caveat out of the way let us move on to dealing with these relevant empath grenades. Number one point and laugh. Point at us and give us a hollow laugh, a slow hollow laugh which is repeated will provide no emotion. Alternatively point and just say ha ha in an exaggerated manner akin to the Simpsons character Nelson Muntz. We won't know why you're laughing and the fact that you're pointing at us giving what is a derisory laugh will wound. Two, you are big on emotion, low on substance. We like to think that we are important and of considerable substance. You are the emotional one, not us. Even, of course, we are the ones which thrive on your emotional attention. To suggest that we are emotional when, of course, we have a limited range of emotion implies that we lack control and therefore is a threat to our control. To suggest that we have no substance, which indeed hints at our need to adopt the characteristics of others and also impugns our importance, also adds to that unconscious or conscious challenge to our control. The lesser will be wounded by the suggestion of being emotive and unimportant, the greater and ultra knowing that what he is will be wounded by the massive hint at knowing what we are, alongside the suggestion of lacking control and lacking importance, a double whammy. Three, feign sleep when we are talking. There's no emotion in closing your eyes and emitting a gentle snoring as you are sat down or lying down, and we, especially where mid-range, embark on one of our lengthy monologues. Once we realise that you are not paying attention, the criticism will then result in wounding. 4. I have to be elsewhere. If this is said without emotion, you are telling us that our present is not magnetic and commanding enough. We are challenged. Make your exit and leave us to our ignited fury at this wounding remark. 5. Jim has one, only his is better. Useful for when we are crowing about some material possession. Jim may be somebody known to us both or you may just make him up. The key thing is to point out that whatever we have, then Jim's is better. It may be that his is a nicer colour or his is larger, faster, more spacious, tougherable, more, more, tougher or more durable. Whatever it is, it will cause wounding. You can even keep rolling out the fictional Jim on future occasions where necessary and it will soon dent our crowing and have us wounded. Number six. I wasn't listening. Can you repeat what you said, please? You should always be listening to us. We are important. Any suggestion that you are not amounts to wounding. If you actually tell us that you're not doing so, then it is even worse. Number seven. Fall asleep when we're having sex with you. To impugn our Olympic sexual mastery in this way is a huge criticism. It may not be full sexual intercourse either. If you are touching us, drift off, or vice versa, are best used with a mid-range as they tend to go off in a wounded sulk rather than erupt in a rage. Number eight. It is just not that interesting to me. Any suggestion that we are dull or boring when we are demonstrating something to you or regaling you with the latest tale of supposed brilliance will cause wounding. Number nine. Let me know when you have finished. This can be applied to so many different activities. We expect you to be a willing and enthusiastic participant or a delighted spectator. If you make this remark when we are showing off about something then walk away, we will be wounded by this behaviour. Number 10. No, that does not make sense. Remember how frustrated you become at our circular conversations and inability to understand the point you are making? Well, this is your chance to turn the tables. You probably do understand, but by suggesting we are not articulating ourselves clearly when delivered without emotion, it will wound. We may try and explain again. If so, repeat the comment and then walk away as our fury ignites and no doubt we insult you for being stupid and thick. But then, after all, you've already landed the wound. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.